Our approach is the fundamental break from trickle-down economics, supercharged by my predecessor. My predecessors like to say, America is a failing nation. In my faith, bless me, Father, for his sin. I mean, come on. <laughs> We're doing pretty damn well economically and getting better. He wants to see the stock market crash. You know why? He doesn't want to be the next Herbert Hoover. As I told him, he's already Hoover. The president made a campaign stop in Raleigh, North Carolina, to celebrate the state of the economy under his administration. And today, we got more positive news. People filing for unemployment for the first time fell to the lowest level since 2022, and wages continue to rise faster than inflation. And in December, this is the number that I want to pay attention to. Retail sales rose more than expected. Now, many Americans say they're unhappy with the economy, but they are out their spending. Joining me now, my dear friend David Gura, business correspondent for NPR. And I want to start right there on retail sales. I often say that Amazon data is way more important than Facebook data because Facebook is what you say you like and Amazon is what you actually do, what you purchase. So all this noise that people are like, everything's too expensive. I'm out. I hate this economy. Well, that doesn't square with people out there shopping, shopping, and buying. They're out there and they're buying things. I think that's important. There was this shift to services that was happening for a while. People were going buying dinner and trips and all that. Now they're going back to buying stuff. physical objects, stuff at the stores. Um, I'm from North Carolina. I was cheered to see the president in my home state. And I think that the tack that he took is interesting, which is he began by talking about something the administration's doing, bringing broadband to North Carolina. And then that was kind of an entry point to get into trying to compel that audience and the broader audience in this country to look at the whole picture. Retail sales is a part of that, but he wants to convey that if you look at all of the data together, this economy is doing pretty darn well. He moves from there to sort of take credit for that, point out the distinction between him and, as he said, his predecessor. He still won't say Donald Trump or President Trump, but he's, he's getting closer to drawing that distinction and reminding people of sort of where we came from. Even in talking about broadband, the point that he made in that speech was, you know, or you must know people who during the pandemic had to go to a McDonald's and sit in the parking lot to get Wi-Fi so that your kids could go to school remotely. I think that that exercise of reminding people how far we've come is something that he's going to have to drill down on more here as the, as the and, campaign And continues. while that's happening, all week we heard CEO after CEO at the World Economic Forum in Davos talk about the fact that the economy is improving, that the Fed will likely cut rates this year, which will be a huge win for everyone. But we're also seeing a boom in new businesses starting. Why do you think that is? I that doesn't often happen when rates are high. No, and that's a, a crucial data point, again, when you look at the entire picture. But it shows that people are, yes, optimistic about the economy, but confident about where it's going as well. And there, there is this kind of arcane disconnect that we're seeing now between what Wall Street thinks the Fed's going to do and what the Fed, in fact, is going to do. And you hear Fed officials coming out and saying... We are going to cut rates. It might not happen as fast as you think they're going to. But again, directionally, we're, we're going in the right. We're going in the right direction. And you mentioned retail sales. Another kind of crucial number that we got today had to do with mortgages. And we saw the average rate on the 30-year fixed rate mortgage down to the lowest it's been since since May. So again, the progress we're seeing here is is notably positive. And I think the president's right hit on that. But when it comes to the economy, we do hear from Trump supporters. We had it better. When we had it better when Trump was in office, we heard it this week from people in Iowa. What exactly are they talking about? What can they point to that was so much better? Well, he talked a lot about it when he was in office. And I think there is that steady drumbeat makes people <laughs> think that it was great. That was true. And then, like, he, he very skillfully ignores the pandemic, which was this huge thing. He thinks it's anomalous. Of course, it was an aberration, but an important one. And in the degree to which Biden does acknowledge that, Trump is very keen to okay, ignore the fact that it Okay, but isn't that happened. so funny? Because he used to say all the time, look at your 401k, you're welcome. And Joe Biden never says that. And somehow people haven't realized, oh, wait a minute, my 401k is bigger, is better now. But it was tr Trump repeating it over and over, you're welcome, stock market. And people somehow believe it. Can't they just look at their statements? They should. Again, I think it's kind of incumbent on the president to keep hitting this. I think that's what we saw in Raleigh today is an effort to keep doing that. I think that's going to happen more and more. Uh, but, you know, we've talked an awful lot about sort of like, is, is the stock market the best barometer to look at the economy? Again, look at the whole picture. It's one part of the fact that I think things are doing really well. Listen, the, the stock market and the economy are not the Discrete same Discrete objects, yes. However, a stock, the stock market doing well is a net positive for a whole lot of people that have any sort of investment. Um, I do want to share something else that we heard from Donald Trump. 
He now says that he is going to put in place protections to stop banks and regulators from trying to, quote, debank you from your political beliefs. Can you explain what in the world that even means, debank you from your political beliefs? I can explain it. You know, there, there have been very far right wing activists who have had financial companies say that they're not going to do business with them anymore. But this is the thing that the former president is floating as though it's something that's happening to people across the board, that banks are saying, we don't want to do business with you because of your politics. This is we're talking about an aberration here. That is not happening widely. And you see this come up when bank CEOs come and testify before Congress. Some lawmakers bring this up. It's not happening. And I'll give credit to Philip Bump from The Washington Post, who wrote a great piece about this today, which is everything that Trump introduces or says immediately, uh, things go catastrophic and worse immediately. And that's sort of what happened. If you if you watch the moment from that speech in New Hampshire, uh, he brings this up. It's kind of incomprehensible. And he goes to look at what they're doing to our country. Again, I will emphasize debanking, removing somebody from being able to use a bank or financial institution service is happening to an infinitesimal amount of people, but he's making it seem like it's something that's widespread. I'm out of time, but then is the reason you hear from some bank CEOs, some big financiers, well, I'm still considering Trump knowing the chaos that it would bring, knowing that he's somebody they wouldn't do business with and they wouldn't hire. Is it all because they know Trump won't regulate them or he'll cut regulations and likely he'll cut taxes? I think, of course, that's the case. And, you know, going back to the World Economic Forum, a number of those bank CEOs spoke to people on the sidelines of that. And I was disheartened to hear how blasé they were about the choice that Americans are going to face. I didn't expect anybody to endorse President Biden or the former President Trump. Um, but they seem to be very complacent about what's going to happen. And the stakes, of course, in an election are huge. I, I thought more than would acknowledge that in those interviews.